So this section is the first section with art history. And with art history, we have all of art history to go over. So we can really only hit the highlights here. And with art history, it really spans all of human history. So we have quite a while to go over. And so we'll start here at the beginning. We start with our prehistoric period, um, how something can be uh, prehistoric and then part of history. We'll, we'll leave that up for another time there. But uh, you know what we call prehistoric period is basically our old Stone Age and our new Stone Age, <clears throat> the Paleolithic and then the Neolithic period. And then after that, we'll look at early civilization, a couple of those cultures. Um, early civilizations basically spread around four uh, primary river valleys that we see civilizations start in. There is the Tigris and Euphrates and around the modern day Iraq area. That's kind of the cradle of civilization. And then we have, uh, of course, the ancient Egypt that is centered around the Nile. Those are the two, uh, two of, the, of the major four that we'll go over here. Okay, so this is our first example. This is called the whole fails figure. In real life, this is only about a couple millimeters high, so it's real, real, real small. Um, at a certain point, humans figured out how to make tools, and so we gradually developed these crude early stone cutting tools, and eventually kind of refined them and became more effective at that. And these are some examples of what would be produced using that method there. And we can really only guess at what these are usually used for. They're believed to be some type of fertility goddess of some sort. And you can see where the head would be, there's a little notch, and that's believed to uh, be where a string would have uh, passed through that notch there, and it's believed that it would be uh, maybe worn around the neck or something along those lines. Um, so um, that's, that's the, the theory, at least. Our next figure is something called the Venus of Willendorf. Um, Venus is V-E-N-U-S, Venus, uh, and Willend Willendorf is spelled W-I-L-L-E-N-D-O-R-F. And this is, you can see, pretty similar. It appears to be uh, some type of pregnant woman, which is uh, you know, possibly what, what this uh, appears to be as well. And this is also believed to have served the same purpose. It's a little bit larger than the previous example, but still a pretty small figurine. And so around this time period, broadly speaking, we also have our first cave paintings. And you can see an example of those cave paintings here, how uh, they're usually very naturalistic. We see all of these animals that early humans would have presumably hunted. And here we have an example of what would be our first signature. They're using their hands here, some kind of stencil, and it's believed the, the pigments were, were blown uh, through a reed of some sort, and uh, they're left with their handprints here. And so, again, it's our first example of an artist signing a work here. We have more cave paintings. An interesting thing about cave paintings, they do develop uh, different parts of the world. It's, it's uh, you know, not located to just one uh, one location. And so similar to kind of how we see with other things like pyramids and, and other objects uh, around the globe, they, they kind of emerge probably independently of, of each other is what it's believed. And so uh, it's kind of that interesting phenomenon there. Now, we do have some paintings in caves, uh, but we also have carvings in caves. And there's a special name that we have for carvings in caves. Those are called petroglyphs. Uh, petroglyph would be spelt P-E-T-R-O-G-L-Y-P-H, that would be petroglyph. And the interesting thing I think with petroglyphs is uh, it's really kind of hard to decipher exactly what they're saying most of the time. With cave paintings, they're pretty directly representational. Obviously, we can tell they're showing here some type of livestock, like a cow or a wild beast, something along those lines. Uh, whereas with a lot of these petroglyphs, you see some really weird things. Okay, so that, that pretty much does it for our Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. 
And so our new Stone Age is really in between 9 to 6,000 BC or so. And this is a real, real major turning point in human history because we develop farming and agriculture. And so instead of being nomadic hunters and gatherers, we can have a more stable environment. And one thing we would see with the development of agriculture would be uh, ceramics. How that could definitely help, because with ceramics you would need, or if you're you know staying in one area with agriculture, you'd need a place to put your crops, um, and maybe seeds to store as well. And so something like this would come in handy. This is something called the earthenware beaker. Okay, so earthenware that was the type of clay that we uh, had just gone over with our last section and obviously here there's a beaker that is uh, believed to have stored grain or crops something along those lines and you can see from the very beginning here we're decorating our ceramics we're using art here and even by modern standards I would say it's pretty well decorated you can see that the animals that it's showing here are stylized they're taking uh, something that would be a notable attribute with each of these animals. For instance, we see the birds on the top with the elongated necks. Uh, you see what appears to be like a wolf or a greyhound, something like that, really elongating the body in the middle section there. On the bottom, uh, those goat horns are really, really exaggerated. And so we see those type of organic figures, and in between that we see some, some geometric shapes as well. And so we have that type of contrast. We have the light and dark contrast. And overall, it's a pretty pretty effective design here. And so with this period, now that we are sitting in one location, instead of moving around, we start to have the development of architecture. And so this is a very um, early example of architecture with Stonehenge here. Uh, you can see it's a, a primitive form of, of our post and beam system that we uh, just went over as well. And so, at, at, at this time, most of the, the types of structures are pretty primitive, but with Stonehenge we do have a, a notable exam, example of, uh, of something somewhat, somewhat exceptional because it still stands today. Okay, so now we move into our different types of early civilizations. Um, the first one is really largely considered the cradle of civilization, present-day Iraq. And uh, that's lo located between the Tigris and Euphrates River Valley. And so they had a lot of uh, different peoples there that lived in what was called Mesopotamia. And if we look at the Sumerians, for, uh, for example, they were especially creative type of people because they uh, developed the first writing system, the, the first wheel, and the plow. And so uh, that particular peoples of the, the, the Mesopotamia were, uh, were pretty creative individuals. And so this is an example of something we would see from this era. This is called a ziggurat. A ziggurat would be spelled Z-I-G-G-U-R-A-T. And at this point, it's believed that basically your religion as well as your government is basically one single authority. This is probably where you would go to, um, you know, for instance, dedicate your crops of the harvest uh, to the gods to make sure you would, you would have a good harvest next year. And so you can see that these are, are pretty, pretty large structures here um, for, for that time frame. Okay, this is another example of, of the early art of this time period. This is called the Victory Steel of uh, Naram Sin. And so we can see this relief sculpture here. How uh, it's an example of, of, of this type of, of art from these uh, these people. Okay. So the next era is the ancient Egyptians, who uh, really aroused quite an interesting civilization. Um, there's you know a host a host of things I'm sure we probably think about with the ancient Egyptians. Uh, uh, pyramids, of course, that we see here, the pyramids, the Great Pyramids at Giza. Um, but a uh, very rich history, you probably think of gold, mummies, pharaohs, the uh, Great Sphinx, um, a lot of different things that, that are interesting about, uh, about the Egyptians. If we take that, that middle pyramid, um, the, the tallest one there, <clears throat> that was built about 2600 BC, right around there. 
And so that's a very long period of time that the ancient uh, Egyptians were able to sustain um, you know, this, this, this way of life. Uh, if we look at Cleopatra, for instance, that's one of the last kings and, or queens, queens of Egypt, and she died in the first century. And so if we take 2600 to the first century, um, that's a longer span of time then than Cleopatra to now. That's only about 2,000 years. And so you can see that, uh, like I said, the ancient Egyptians were, were able to uh, keep their, their way of life intact for, for quite a while. Uh, this middle pyramid is also one of the tallest uh, structures for quite a while. When it was first built, it was about 480 feet tall or so. Uh, now, because of erosion, it's down to about 460 feet or so, but, um, but yeah, it's uh, still, still a pretty massive structure. Uh, these things are pretty incredibly built as far as the precision that, that they were built with. Um, originally, they would have been uh, covered smooth. The edges would have been covered smooth, um, and the pyramids would have been white with a, a gold top. Uh, you know, section there at the, at the top, and so I'm sure in the in the desert sun it, in its prime it was quite quite a sight to see. Okay, so um, so this is kind of early on within the the Egyptian dynasty, and this is a later example of their architecture. You can see here they've moved on to this post and beam system, and if you look all the way down at the steps on the bottom left corner you can see two individuals walking down there and so uh, that gives us an example of the scale that this is uh, still pretty monumental in terms of the scale and uh, their archite architecture back in the day uh, like this example would have been painted bright colors like um, especially the primaries like yellow red and blue um, it would have been uh, probably shimmering in the sun similar to the uh, the pyramids in their in their prime so those are two examples of their architecture. Okay, this is an example of their sculpture. Uh, this is basically the king and the queen there. Uh, king Menkora, I believe, is the, the, the guy there on the left, and the uh, queen on the right, her name is Kimmer or Nebti. Um, it's not really something we, we have to remember, but uh, that's, that's their names there. And I want you to take special attention to the pose that the king is, is giving us here. You can see that he looks kind of stiff in a way. His, 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 his body's equally balanced on both sides as far as balance from the left and the right legs. Uh, but the left foot is a little bit ahead of that right foot. It's kind of toe to heel there. And if you notice, his, his arms are clenched, or his hands are clenched, and his arms are uh, right alongside of his body. We'll, uh, we'll see this emerge a little bit later. And this is an example of, of, a, of a mask you would have on, on top of the pharaoh, and you can see uh, the riches that ancient Egypt was known for, the gold, the jewels, uh, those types of things, as well as their uh, you know, specific kind of um, idealistic type of, of, um, of, of pattern with their designing, uh, with the makeup, with the you know, the headdress type thing, uh, all of these things that we would, we would probably recognize as, as Egyptian. Okay, this is an example of their two-dimensional art. Here we have a, a wall painting that would have been inside uh, probably the chamber for the pharaoh. And we see what gives Egyptian two-dimensional art its distinctive look. If you notice, part of it looks kind of funny. Um, what Egyptian artists tried to do was draw everything from their most characteristic angle. And so that's why it looks a little weird. For instance, if we look at the, the head, the head is shown from the profile because they think that that is the most characteristic angle of the head. Whereas the eye, uh, it looks like you are looking directly at it because they consider that the most characteristic angle from the eye. And so if we extend that to the body, we can see that the torso would be facing us, uh, whereas the arms and legs, the appendages there, would be seen kind of more from the angle there. Okay, and so that's that's something that the ancient Egyptians... <coughs> ah, excuse me. Uh, sorry there. So that's something the ancient Egyptians did uh, with their two-dimensional art a lot. 
And what this also is an example of is, is a term that I want us to know. It's something we'll see later on as well. It's something called hierarchic scale or hierarchic proportion. Okay, and that's uh, spelled H-I-E-R, A-R-C-H-I-C, and then scale or proportion. And so what that basically is, is when the, the sizes of the figure are shown in relationship to their social rank. Okay, so here, uh, the man here is most important in terms of the social rank at the time. So he's the largest, uh, the woman smaller, and then the, the smallest, the least important uh, societal measures would be the child. And so uh, that's how we see them pictured here. Um, that's also if you see, for instance, in like hieroglyphics maybe or something along those lines, uh, the, the pharaoh is always the tallest person. That if you're like a nobleman, uh, you're not going to be as tall as the pharaoh, but you're going to be taller than common people. They're, they're going to be kind of the, the smaller people, and then slaves would be even smaller than that, I'm sure. And so um, that would be another example of, of hierarchic scale, but uh, this, this picture does a good job of, of showing that. All right, so that's it really for this first section. We're going to start off, start off a little bit light here with our our prehistoric um, and early civilization era. And the next uh, thing we're going to go over is, is basically the art of antiquity, classical art.